what's going on G verse this is a very interesting video woke up this morning was uh, getting ready for the day doing some things and I got this email there are certain people that know how to get me to read their emails because I do scan all of them but most of them I'm not going to respond to because I can't but this one was really interesting because I was up at 5 and it came in at 5.05. I was like, ho, who's up with me? I go into the email and it is long. I'm talking six paragraphs, indentations, all of that. But the first thing was, how do you stay up when your world is falling apart? I was watching your videos about you working in the labor pool and I just could not believe it because you don't seem to wear that on your everyday continents. And I was like, ooh, continents. I actually knew what that word meant. I was impressed that they knew how to use it in the proper context. And it went on and on and on. And essentially, this person is catching hell. Uh, catching a lot of hell. Getting divorced. Close to 50. Kids going to college. She is really, really in a bad, bad way. And she's scared. And she's just like, how did you reinvent yourself? Because she, she saw, because people come into this YouTube channel from a potential of 820 different videos. They may be looking for storage auctions. They may be looking for Craigslist. They may be looking for mo There's a lot of ways that people enter this channel. And she had entered into an old video. Then she went to the channel page and saw the new stuff. And she's just like, I would have never known that you were working in some labor pool. She says, things are so bad that she may have to do something similar. And, you know, I read it and read it. Very smart woman. Very, you know apparently well-educated, which goes ahead, you know, if you watch this channel, education does not always equal the income. Sometimes it does, but with this disruptive economy that we're living into, that there's many times it's not because that education you have is not marketable and people do not want those skill sets. Do not <clears throat> get confused that you though you worked hard and got a GPA was going to equal to 150 to 300 K. It's not. You can work your ass off and do all that coursework and end up being even broker than you were before you started. And this is where she's finding herself because she got, you know, she went in and put in her educational credentials and she has what I call fluff degrees. Once upon a time, a fluff degree would get you a job. No longer will that, is that the case? So going on, reading, reading, reading. I mean, she's got a lot of stuff. Like she clearly needs someone to talk to. So your her initials are SK. So SK, this is for you. How does one stay up and not lose their mind in the middle of chaos? You don't. You don't. You don't stay up. You, you actually lose your mind. I think many people don't really understand the process of life. Everyone is going through something. Everyone. It could be something small. It could be something uh, life-altering, such as death in the family, terminal illness, all kinds of stuff. You know, there's a lot of things. Everyone's going through something. Now, the big thing that's super important is everyone responds so differently to drama, trauma, and devastation. I was not a person who was able to keep my wits about me in the middle of chaos. I actually fell. I fell very hard. I fell hard that it took me a three year journey to get back to a sense of normalcy. So my advice to you is what you're going through is what you're going through. You're going to feel how you're going to feel. Now you can take this journey this process, this evolution, and you can do two things. You can be damned and condemned by it, or you can use that energy to build yourself into a stronger person. Everyone isn't strong. I'm learning that as life goes on. 
everyone doesn't have the capacity to put Humpty Dumpty back together again. And that's what I had to do. I had to re dream new dreams, reinvent myself, because the path that I was on was taken away from me. It was literally pulled from under my feet. And it's happened not once, it's happened a few times. And you just have to become very malleable with this thing called life. You can have your core goals, your core direction. And that's another problem that trips people up. There are no core goals. There's no core direction. So when something happens, then their life is torn asunder because there was nothing there to stabilize it in the first place. So, you know, you're feeling fucked. You're feeling betrayed. Uh, I'm not going to get into what, you know, you said about your husband. I wasn't there. I don't know. Uh, everyone tells the story to their best vantage point. But I will say this. You have a choice to be happy. It's going to be really, really challenging for you to be happy right now. But you can make it happen. Feel how you want to feel. Deal with it. Um, another thing, start a journal. <clears throat> Write down your thoughts every day. Then do this. Write down what you were thinking that day. Then the next day, you know, close your journal or close your computer screen, whatever you're doing. Then the next day, read your thoughts from the previous day before you write your thoughts for the second day. You're going to discover that your thinking is not organized. You're going to discover that your thinking is chaotic and crazy. Because right now, you are a hot, emotional mess. You're a bawling cauldron of confusion, doubt, and uh, misery. It is very, very hard to have a good, accurate, and productive thought process when your inner world is jacked up like that. It's, it's very hard. It's very hard. There's a group of people that actually perform really, you know, perform better under stress, but most people cave. One of the things you see on the internet is you'll, you know, like uh, when I did my uh, video about eBay, everyone brings up the exceptions. The exceptions they'll bring up that one person um, essentially you're gonna have to really really learn to control your thought process right now your thought pot process is controlling you you're led by emotion you're led by how you feel and it's leading you in bad places into bad decisions I was there you could be pissed off at the world the world does not give a fuck, does not care. And this is the thing that's going to be very, very harmful. If you die tomorrow, only a handful of people will care if that. Because you haven't built a life of significance, intent, desire. I mean, you're, you're going to be gone and only a few people will know that you were here. That's the reality. That's how most people die. That's how most people die. Because I call it, you know, in the 50 laws of hustling, building a kingdom in a thimble, putting all of your life in one tight, constricted, very tight space. And then when it implodes or explodes, then your life is fucked because you haven't built a life of significance. And, you know, many people are going to be pissed. Getting married, having kids is not building a life of significance. It's keeping the population going. Let's be real. And this is going to be harmful and insulting. So I really expect a lot of dislikes. I'm going to go for a record here. Most of us are just taking up oxygen. People are like, oh, little Johnny is like so special. Little Johnny's not special. He's shitting in his diapers just like the other kids. He's not special. He's special to you because he's yours. Now, if little Johnny grows up and solves cancer issues, then he becomes special. If little Johnny grows up and creates a dynamic technique to bring water to arid areas of the world, then he is special. That's when you become special when you do stuff. You're not special just because you're here. And that is the damning thing that kills a lot of people because they feel entitled to a certain life that they haven't earned. They feel left out or hurt because... Once again, without getting too deep into what happened between you and your husband, what did you do wrong? <clears throat> you know, I was married before, and I can honestly say that there was times that I fucked up. There was times that she fucked up. 
it is really rare that a marriage will implode or be over because of one person both people are usually doing something one may be doing more than the other but usually both people are doing shit wrong both not one both and i can say that i did shit wrong in my marriage and you know once you can say that and once you can own that then you'll be in a better position to have another relationship and it will last because when people get married for the second time and it lasts, it isn't because they met a better person. It's because they became a better person. It's the same. Per you, you got you. If you take that same person into the new relationship, you're going to get the same results. So essentially, you got to really look at that. And also <clears throat> your life isn't over because you're a certain age. <clears throat> excuse me. Your life isn't over because you're a certain age and, you know, the kids going to college. That's what I called um, being grown, so to speak. I am not grown. I am still a child of the world, a child of the galaxy. I am still growing. I'm 47 years old, and I am still growing. I refuse to classify myself as grown because grown to me is dead. It's like, okay, I'm grown. You're done. There's nothing else you can do. There's no, nothing else you can learn. You're d No. You're an adult. You're an adult. You're a mature adult. But as grown... I, I would not use that classification because it's a limiting classification. So take the label off of you being grown. Take the label of you off being almost 50 and start to say, what can I bring to the world? Because one of the reasons that I can stay up now is I have way more things I can bring to the world. You know, as long as it's about you and your family, you're going to have a lot of misery, a lot of misery. Because your only your focus is in a very narrow context, it's extremely narrow. So for you to get out of this rut you're in and this this place of misery, uh, this place that you're feeling so damned, you're going to have to think of someone else other than yourself and your kids. Because right now everyone's like just concentrate on you, concentrate on the family, and you've been doing that, right? Do you feel better? Nope. <laughs> so if you're doing what everyone's saying you should do and you don't feel better using critical analysis what does that mean it means you need to do something else because it's not working it's not working you've got to have a higher purpose that is what got me out of my spot i had a higher purpose a much higher purpose than myself uh one that i am still working on and that's one of the things that drives me but it's a choice you have to make choices. Like I said, right now, it's going to be because it just happened. But you've got to learn how to emotionally manage yourself. Something bad happens, you cannot fall apart. When something great happens, you can't get a crackhead high. You've got to really manage yourself because that gives you resiliency on this thing called life. Because shit's going to happen. People are going to come and go. People are going to die people are going to disappoint you people are going to betray you on the other side is people will come into your life that you don't even know and will do outrageously good things to you and for you i know people concentrate on the yard birds the uh jack wads the despicable people that come in your life and create disharmony I choose to concentrate on the people who come into my life and bring me joy because I was making a mistake about two and a half years ago here on this YouTube channel, maybe three years ago. I would just go after people, hate videos and stuff, you know, this person, that. And once again, I was focusing my energy in a very narrow spot. Great if you're a laser, pretty bad if you're human. And... I was ignoring the people who were making the channel great to chase after, to berate, to try to get even with folks who were making the channel bad. That's how my social policy evolved. You could disagree with me. I don't care. I mean, if you have a good point and sane and solid and you're not being an asshole, I'll, yeah, I'll leave the comment up. But if it's clear that you're just coming to the channel for attention because this is how YouTube works, you know, if I respond to your comment that filters out into Google first, all this other stuff. There are people clearly 
and uh, this is a test. If you see someone leaving really crazy comments, go to their channel and look at the feed if they don't hide it. And if it's hidden for some reason, that may be another reason for caution. But there are people who just get up to go out and create disharmony and misery because that is the core of who they are as a person. So when I see those types, and it's very clear because I recognize them, I will block them and delete their comments and move on because it's not about having a productive conversation. It's more about attention. When you go to someone's channel and you're grand scanning, it's not about you trying to educate people or promote something. No, you're grand scanning because you want attention. You want that level of respect that for some reason, you're just not feeling that you're getting. So I say all that to also say that you're feeling disrespected. You, you want attention, you want to be heard. You're going to have to learn how to rock your inner child to sleep your damn self. You're going to have to learn how to make that kid in you happy your damn self. Once you learn that trick, and then, you know, for everyone is different. Everyone is different because you can have 10 people in the room and an alien pops in and everyone's going to have a different story. Well, he came in this way. No, he was green. No, no. Everyone's going to have a different story because everyone is different. Everyone's like a snowflake unique similar but unique in the fact that we're human so you gotta this is where the journaling comes in many people poo poo it they are like ah that's not gonna do anything when you learn to recognize that you are having jacked up and chaotic thoughts and you can call yourself on your own bullshit you become a very powerful person you become a very powerful person you become above and beyond what you expect of yourself because when you get to that level then you can start making some really awesome choices for yourself you can start to create a life of intent and design and uh, there was something about that because everyone hears me say that and they're like what is that a life of intent and design is one that you choose you don't wake up and just do shit you don't want to do because it's expected of you I have uh, some issues with some family members because certain things were expected of me that I was like, I'm not doing. And there was some hurt feelings there and I don't give a fuck because at the end of the day, when you get in that bed, unless you're married, even if you're married, you get in that bed alone and you're waking up alone and you came in the world, you were pretty much completely and utterly vulnerable. And many people have not been able to shake, been able to eradicate, been able to create a life they want because they can't shake that kid shit. You know, I grew up without a, a quote of father in the home and it is people in society that will tell you, well, if you didn't have a father in the home, you ain't gonna be, I had this chick who was dysfunctional as hell was just saying, well, the reason that, you know, you don't probably wanna get married is cause you didn't have, no, Reason I didn't want to marry her because she wasn't worth marrying. <laughs> it was very simple. It was very simple. But many people will push on you that the reason that you are the way you are is because of shit that happened to you when you were a kid. And it is only true if you choose to accept that as a truth. I didn't accept it. I reconciled in my mind. I was like, I'm not going to be that kind of person. I'm not going to be 40, 50, 60 years old blaming someone I don't know about some shit they didn't do when I am full capacity to grow up and be a happy, wonderful human being. That's a choice. So, because, you know, just based on the email, there was some, there was some inner kid shit that was all over the place. You got to make that baby happy yourself. You've got to learn how to rock yourself to sleep and be content with that because as long as you're looking at external situations as the reason for your disaccord, if you're looking at, well, you know, I'm unhappy because my husband left me and cheated with this blonde. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe you're unhappy because you're not the woman that you know you're capable of being. Because the thing is, people fall in and out of love all the time. And it is just the nature of life. You cannot make someone love you. You can be such an awesome person that you can compel them to love you, 
Now notice the difference. Make is you're gonna take your hand, you're gonna push a button and they're gonna do it. Compel is you've created yourself as this person that just draws people to you. It's a big difference. And even though you're almost 50, if you get your mind right, you can still find relationship happiness. If you get your mind right, even though you're 50, it's almost 50, the kids, blah, blah, blah. And that's something else uh, I've run into with some of my friends. I never actually decided to check out. When you say I'm 45, like you hear women are famous for this. 35, I want this. 40, I want this. And many women are walking around feeling like other failures because certain benchmarks weren't checked by certain age points when really if they made a life-driven decision based on facts, I worked in a doctor's office. I've heard <clears throat> OBGYNs tell women straight up, okay, you know, you're 28, you're 29, you're 32. If you want to have kids, you need to start working on that now because every year after 35, your fertility drops dramatically. Your eggs get old. They get, get janky. I've heard this. So, and even if you don't have a good OBGYN, if you want to be a mother, looks like you will be studying that shit if it's important to you. Not knowing all of the eight different sizes of a certain coach back. You, where your energy is invested is what's important to you. It, it is never a failure. When I look at a person and I see where they put their energy, that's what's important to them. I don't care what the fuck they tell me. <laughs> where they put their energy is what's important to them. I put my energy into a life of design and intent because it's very important to me. Creating freedom is very important to me. That's where my energy goes. That's why I don't watch a lot of television because television will enslave the fuck out of you. But essentially, you have a lot of work to do on you. Not your ex-husband-to-be, not your kids, but on you. Journal today. Get a journal. You, today. Start today. And write until your fingers hurt. Then tomorrow, get up and look at that shit. Read it. Then start writing on the second day and the third day. Part of this process is going to help you cleanse a lot of that emotional discord that's running around in your mind. That shit is like a pinball machine. It's just, bam, popping off one cerebral side of your cerebral cortex to the other. Just ping pong. You, you can't even sleep at night because it's so active. If you start writing, and also another suggestion, I say this, learn how to meditate. Go spend the money, take a class on transcendental meditation. Writing, meditation, and goal setting. So what? I keep saying this because I think it's funny. Because, you know, once you're a certain age, you're supposed to just roll up and die. Um, set some ambitious goals for yourself. It's clear by the, the email that you wrote me that you're intelligent. It's clear that you can think. Use that. You really, really use that. <clears throat> and um, understand, happiness is a choice. Sanity is a choice. Peace is a choice. All of this stuff's a choice. And these are things that can be developed over time. I didn't have this stuff uh, for what I'm calling, if you don't, if you've seen it, I'm putting up these videos, my life as a day laborer, uh, rest in peace, 1997 to 1999. It was some harrowing fucking years, man. I mean, just, I can look back now because I've worked on myself. I really, really worked on myself. And when you work on yourself and you're honest with yourself, you can see the trajectory. And I can look. I mean, all right, I'm in the labor pool, making like five bucks an hour, six bucks a day, like eight bucks. Oh, man, that was like, ooh, high wage. And I went from that guy because I had to change who I was. Because the guy that was in the labor pool would have never written a book. That guy was never going to write a book. And this comes to another part. And many people loathe this. And you cannot have the life that you want if you don't have it, if you remain the same person that you are. You will have to change as a person. Many people are like, I'm not going to change. I'm going to stay the same. Ain't nothing wrong with me. If your life is the way you want it and you're happy with it, cool. If your life is fucked up, chaotic, and full of misery, guess who needs to do a metamorphosis? You. You got to change. And a lot of people, especially in the black community, it's like, oh, you're getting brand new. You're going to wine tasting. 
it's like, I don't know what the fuck it is with some black people, but they're like so fucking afraid of someone thinking that they will not be black if they do a certain activity. It gives me daily giggles on my Facebook page. It, it's just do not compartmentalize yourself. You don't compartmentalize yourself and don't limit yourself to only a handful of activities in this thing called life or only a handful of countries you're going to visit because, you know, well, black people don't go there. I'll tell you a quick thing. I got friends looking at me crazy. There's this Russian icebreaker that goes up to the North Pole. I'm going to do that shit one day because this shit is just patently fucking fascinating to me. Because you get off the ship because it goes up on the ice and there's like fucking penguins and shit walking around. Penguins! I'm going to meet some fucking penguins. I want to do this shit because it's different. It's fun. And I'm a curious person. Now, you want to do something like that because she put something in there I'm not going to share in the video. Fucking do it. Do it. You could be dead next year. I mean, I know that's very morbid, but when my uh, partner was in hospice and I was going there every day, Nothing gets more real than going to visit a person that you know is going to die very soon. Nothing gets more real than that. Nothing. It will open you up. And it started making me evaluate, you know, some more of my choices. Because I'm like, hmm, do you want to be dead and the day before you were miserable? Nah, I don't really want that life. I don't want that life. So what's going to make you happy? writing, doing videos, talking to people. Okay, do that shit. You, you've got to have a very streamlined, linear process to what makes you happy. If you don't know what makes you happy and you haven't done the work, you could be miserable when you could also be happy if you would think about it. Everybody doesn't need the same shit to be happy. That is one of the biggest misnomers on the planet. You could be happy. I got a friend who um, is much older than me. And uh, he's real cool. He got a house. He got the smallest house. You know, he's like, I could have got a bigger house. I don't need a bigger house. It's just me. He knew he wasn't getting married. He knew he wasn't having kids. Dude is fucking happy because he created a life of intent and design before, you know, I even knew what those words meant for myself. It's your choice. It's your choice. Like, going on the other side of the continuum. If you're a person, you know you don't want to have kids. You know in your heart. You know for a fact. Don't have kids. I'm sorry if grandmama's going to be pissed. Grandmama will get over it. Because it's you, the one that's got to have that kid, raise that kid, pay money for that kid, and deal with that stuff, not grandmama. And stop living your life for other people. Because I get that too. You are living your life for other people. You know, like I said, it was six freaking paragraphs. You, you can't do that because that's another reason that you're miserable. You're doing shit you don't want to do for people you really don't like. And that's something I'm just feeling from the tone of the email. How fucking miserable is that? Doing shit for someone you don't like, doing shit that you don't like for someone that you're not... I mean, can you think of a more articulate recipe for misery? I mean, seriously, that has got to be one of the dopest ways to fuck yourself. And people do it. And it's just like, I'm being a good person. Really? Are you being a good person or are you being a pussy? My, my thoughts are you being a pussy. Because once you do all of this work, and you know, it's going to take time. You know, there I have no timetables for you, but it's going to take time. I will say the sooner you start, it's the sooner you will yield results. And once you get these results, you'll see a change. Because I remember the day the shit changed for me. I was uh, working for, through a temp agency, for Voice Dream. It was Powertail, then it went to Voice Dream, then it went to T-Mobile. Because it went, Voice Dream, because it, it did the T-Mobile thing very quickly. Because they got bought out. And I got laid off that last time. I sat there and said these words, I will figure it out. I took ownership. It was like, you know, I was disappointed, but I wasn't mad at them. I mean, the guy was nice. He was trying to help me out. He said he could have got me two more weeks. And like two more weeks really wasn't going to do anything. It really wasn't. I was pretty much, the sooner that I started working on Plan G was the sooner that I was going to have the life. And that's when it all started. I started to think. I started to write down my goals. I went back to my room. I was in the boarding house at the time. And 
start writing all this stuff down and notes and goals and start calculating the cost of going to college and all this stuff. And I actually started to think, to really, really think about my life in terms I never thought about. And then I accomplished in six weeks <laughs> what I could not do in two and a half years. Moved, got a better job, got my own place, and started, you know, like the Jeffersons to move on, moving on up. It was just, it was because I started thinking. I stopped reacting and I started thinking. As long as you're in a reactionary posture, you will be a slave to your emotions and whoever understands that you're a slave to your emotions, they will be your master. They will own you forever, for free. Think about that. Slavery's not dead, pimping's not dead, and those hoes ain't scared. I had to say that. But just something for you to think about. Happiness is a choice. Happiness is, all this stuff's a choice. And the sooner you start figuring out what choices work for you and making those choices come hell or high water, the sooner you will be happy, content, and living that life of intent and design. All right, this is Glendon, and I'll see you on the good side.